Good morning, Jay here. This is my final video for my custom uh, 112 scale APC scratch build uh, made out of styrene. Uh, I posted another video uh, yesterday that was just uh, basically this video just with some music behind it. Um, I just kind of wanted to put out a first video just with, with uh, just showcasing the vehicle itself. But in this one, I'm just going to go in a little more depth into explaining the process and what everything is. Uh, here you can see I'm measuring it. It's uh, about 37, 38 inches long. Uh, might even actually be closer to 39 if you count the the rail in the back of the rail gun. It's about 12 inches wide, and here in a second it's about 12 inches tall from wheel to the uh, top of the rail gun itself. So I think it's actually pretty big. Uh, later in the video I'm gonna have a picture where I show that the uh, with a size comparison to some other um, uh, figures. Um, but yeah, it's all done. I've painted it up. I've weathered the inside and outside. I'll, I'll do a... a here, here I'm showing it's actually 12.8 pounds that I weighted, but that's without the the roof and the railgun attached. It's just with the with the actual bottom of the, the vehicle. Uh, it's demonstrating that the, uh, the chain gun in the front rotates. And it's actually secured on there, so you can actually pick up the 12-pound vehicle with it. And then the, the sliding egress door uh, opens independently on its own. Uh, this is the right side, passenger side of the vehicle. You can see some of the decals. Uh, here you can see that the, the rail gun uh, rotates and slides along the, the rail. Uh, here shortly I'll do a good demonstration of sliding the rail gun all the way back. Um, you can see some of the weathering it turned out pretty good, I think. Uh, and tried to get it around the areas that would have the most points of contact, like in the rear, the, the wheel, wheel rails, and all the parts that would be scraped and scratched just from normal wear and tear. And I'm turning it around now, and you can see some of the decals on the the, pad, the driver's side, the left side of the vehicle. And notice that the wheels are actually moving independently as well, and they work just fine. So it's actually a working vehicle. It can it can ride along and drive. Here I'm showing that the railgun can move independently on its own, rotate as well as actually slide along the, the, the rail at its own. I did a lot of weathering to the rail, the, the rail, to show that the um, you know the rail is commonly scraped just because of the wear and tear. Uh, here I've got these two pins that I used to secure the, the front of the roof down. And this is all made of styrene, just, just handmade from scratch. Um, I got another video where I show how the, the rail gun attaches and pops in and out real easily, as well as the roof, so if you want to go back and watch that, you can. Uh, here are some more decals on top of the, the rail gun, and I'll, I'll explain these decals here in a second and their meaning. Um, just kind of showing a little bit of the, the weathering and giving it that, that look of, of scraping metal, because that's kind of what it would be like if it was actually on a rail, just like this. Uh, the paint wouldn't really hold up very much longer. Uh, I'll pop off the hood here real quick, and the back of the hood slides into those two uh, square slots, and the front is held in by those two pegs. But it's, it's secure, it's not going anywhere, especially if you have the pegs and it doesn't go anywhere. And there's some of the, the other decal, and that's just a serial number, kind of snuck in my, my YouTube channel uh, name on there. And again, I'm showing just the front of the chain gun. Got some jerry cans up there, a scratch build MRE box. You can see that the uh, the safety harnesses for the seats work still. You can see some of the weathering there on the inside of the, of the cockpit. And then I went ahead and put in these uh, fire hydrants that I got off of Amazon and they slide in and out on their own. And then here's the Lieutenant Gorman's chair and it can rotate. 360 as well as slide along its track and the, the track of the of the seat I also did some some, some more weathering just to make it seem as if it's you know it's got a lot of wear and use and I also weathered uh, the floor where the where people would have like the most the, where their feet would be where you would have your boots sitting uh, just to make it more realistic as if you know if this were a real vehicle that would be the most used place and then again all these safety harnesses work independently 
I've got this little ledge at the top. I think you saw it with the some more emery boxes. Here I'm just demonstrating that the door is working and showing some of the detail inside the cockpit. Uh, here's a, a, a size comparison of the Hazlab, Sentinel, and Galactus, as well as a NECA aliens, NECA Marine, a Black Series Stormtrooper, a Balaverse figure, and a classified uh, Corpa Viper. So you can kind of get a, a scale of just how big this thing is. It's, it's pretty huge. It's bigger than Galactus, and he's already a beast. Uh, looks really good with the troops out in front of it. It scales really well with the NECA figures as well. Even though it's intended for a you know 112 scale. That Lambda Shield is actually the the company. I'll go back into that in a second. Uh, just kind of showcasing some more of the the weathering. But the, the Rio Grande is actually the name of the, the ship that the the vehicle belongs to. Uh, here's some some decals that I was working on that I actually attached to the vehicle eventually. Um <clears throat> the Rio Grande is the and this is what the the nose art was based on, and this is what the some of the decals and the, the markings were, were based on. World War II, uh, British and American uh, utility vehicles. Here, here you can see some of the uh, screens from the lieutenant's area. You can see some of the, like the the life signs. I can't remember what they're called. Um, I put some I snuck in some of the movie scenes. There's Hudson. There's Hicks. Uh, snuck in some other scenes and just kind of. Photoshopped some, some words on it. You can see the, the weapons locker right there with a whole bunch of pulse rifles, uh, two flamethrowers, and a smart gun. And on top of it, there's a, another motion tracker and a couple of cut and torches. Here's what the, the troop compartment looks like from the inside. And I'm sorry for the, the shakiness, but it was kind of hard to hold this camera inside of the vehicle um, at the same time while holding the flashlight because I was trying to, get, trying to get it lit up in there. I'm trying to show what it should, what it look like from the inside. That's the gunner's chair and the the a driver's chair. There's some MRE boxes I stowed underneath that chair. And then there's some close-up of the jerry cans, the MRE box, and some of the detail of the, the engine compartment and the driver's seat. And all of this turned out really good. I'm really happy with how this turned out right here. That's the driver's seat. Uh, some communications equipment. I had a headset that I attached with a the cord but I ended up removing it and again there's the the vital signs there's the cutting torches and backpacks stowed inside again the patrol compartment so I got the 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 screens are vital signs some motion trackers some movies movies shots excuse me and also some uh, screenshots from the alien isolation video game as well as the first movie there's some more of the uh, detailing, weathering, and the, and the decals. The front is really beaten up because I wanted it to look, I added some actual putty to it, uh, some epoxy, and I wanted it to look like the vehicles, like the AAVs that were used in the last couple of decades um, that were used for, oftentimes they would use them to ram gates, ram walls, things like that. And so I imagine it in, in my in my universe, this vehicle has been used to, to ram a gate or two, and that's why it's all beat up in the front. Uh, this is a, a emblem of the actual Raiders Marines, and I, it's a modified to look like with the Colonial Marines uh, image. Uh, the 13th stands for the 13th vehicle. There's, a, there's an image of the, an actual AEV being used to, to ram, a, ram a fence. Um, the nomenclature is the, the Rio Grande is the name of the ship that the, the this vehicle would belong to. So like the the Sulaco. Um it's a nod to Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine had all of their their ships named after uh, famous rivers in uh, in the world, and one of them was the the Rio Grande. So I just kind of stuck it in. There's my ship. There's the weathered uh, nose art. The 13th is 13th vehicle. That that up arrow stands for um, Alpha Company, and the two dots would be Second Platoon. So it's Alpha Company, Second Platoon. And then there's the Colonial Marine Raiders emblem. Got a Wayland Lutani uh, sign on there as well, hidden in the, in the rear willow. Some weathering. 
And the nomenclature actually has some meaning as well. Um, if, you, if you look at it, it's actually... I forget what it is off the top of my head, but it's a... Uh, the 2 stands for 2nd Armored Division, the, that triangle stands for an Armored Division, uh, the I stands for Infantry, and then the 18th and the 81 are for the Battalion or Regiment that it belongs to. The 16 with a circle is the Bridge Classification Plate, which um, engineers use to get a rough estimate real quick to see if the vehicle can, uh, can safely move across a bridge or a road or something like that, depending on the weight. And then the um, 13th on the doors, or both the, the number of the vehicle and the convoy. And yeah, that's it. It's got a real grand, and got the two dots. Um, I'm just doing some more close ups with the actual troops inside the vehicle. You can see there's classified, there's some black series in there, uh, customs, and then there's some uh, Valorous figures as well. And then here's my own, uh, he's my stand in for Burke. James Cameron. James Cameron's kind of known for being kind of a not a nice guy to work with, but kind of made a custom just to give him me a civilian. And I got my lieutenant there. And then I've got my stand-in for Newt as well, which is just this cheap Harry Potter uh, figure I found on AliExpress for like ten bucks. Um, thinking about kind of customizing it to make it more look like Newt, but that's maybe a uh, project for another day. Not really. And that's my stand-in for Ripley. I don't, I don't have a Ripley or new yet, but that would be where they sat. And then I also have my Android, which is mine. Has got a, it's a combat droid based on the the Colonial Marines fire team video game. He's that white one with the smart gun sitting in the front door. So it's kind of based off the working Joe from Alien Isolation, uh, except that he's an actual combat android. And again, sorry for all the shaky cameras. But yeah, just a couple more quick shots of all the interior, just showing the detail and everything, but that's it. That's finally finished. Uh, I might do a little bit of minor things here and there, but for the most part, I think this project's going to be retired. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Thank you all for watching, and I uh, hope you have a good day.